All right, grand raising everyone, grand raising. I am back here again to give a little, uh, I, I, I want to make a, somewhat of a, an attempt in explaining the whole thing with the microbiome, the gut microbiome, uh, the process of how our guts actually are the origin point of most, if not all, diseases or disease. Uh, how the, the gut in itself is also linked to, because the gut is linked to the, the core of our systems. Uh, you can see why, why when certain imbalances are occurring within the gut system or a restriction of certain movements <clears throat> within the gut system, it actually creates uh, an increase in uh, the slowing down of certain uh, energetic cycles that would occur within the body. So, for example, there is something called mucoid plaque. Let me let me get into the screen share here. Uh, all right. So, there is something called mucoidal plaque, right? Which Essentially, so this is supposed to represent the villi of the gut, right? So let me just give a little quick little intro here. So I found these, these, these videos to be very interesting and in actually explaining the, the process of the gut, right? And its connection to the, to the uh, vagus nerve and also its connection to the brain. How the gut and the brain communicate has fascinated us for centuries. The gut-brain axis transforms information via the vagus nerve from food to feelings. Once eaten, digested food particles enter the small intestine, so these are the which villi. is covered with a velvety layer of villi. Each villus is lined with a single layer of epithelium. This layer is made up of different cell types. One of them, the enteroendocrine cell, is unlike the others. It is our gut sensor. In addition to communicating through hormones, we discovered that enteroendocrine cells also synapse with nerves, including the vagus nerve. We call those enteroendocrine cells synapsing with nerves neuropod cells. They sense and react to their environment. They sense mechanical, thermal, and chemical stimuli, such as nutrients or bacterial byproducts in the gut lumen. Inside neuropod cells, signals from stimuli are converted into tiny electrical pulses. These pulses propagate via synapses onto the apparatus. Mm -hmm. So they explain, and it's amazing how our, how our body system, um, our body simulator system, uh, they show you, they show you, they pick up signals and they send electrical signals or electrotonal signals to, to the system, to the nerve, right? Um, <laughs> our gut is a brain, guys. Our gut is a brain. A neuron of the vagus nerve. Vagal neurons carry the sensory information to the brainstem, linking the signals generated inside the small intestine to the brain. The neuropod cell connection with the vagus nerve serves as a conduit for food in the gut to influence brain function within seconds. This connection is also a potential portal for gut pathogens to access the brain. Mm -hmm. This new knowledge is a foundation for designing therapies to treat disorders related to altered gut brain signaling. So that's why you know you would you would um in itself the, the, the whole thing with uh, certain pathogens, certain uh, certain things such as like candida actually have the ability to actually manipulate uh, your, your brain signaling manipulate your 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 brain right uh let me see so i go here and I'll... in the gut mucosa specialized immune cells actively reinforce the barrier and induce tolerance against food or commensal bacteria among these immune cells a recently discovered type of lymphocytes called innate lymphoid cells or ilcs 
orchestrate immune responses, and maintain tissue homeostasis. So again, this is a villi here that we saw Unlike earlier. the T and B lymphocytes, uh, ILCs do not express yeah. adaptive antigen recognition receptors. As such, their activation and expansion is not driven by antigen, but rather by cytokine signals from the tissue. ILCs come in three types, ILC1, ILC2, and ILC3. ILC3s interact with dendritic cells to maintain the epithelial barrier. Dendritic cells, which are specialized in the presentation of antigen, acquire antigen from the gut microbiota and secrete interleukin-23. IL-23 stimulates the ILC3s to make IL-22, which then activates the epithelium to secrete antimicrobial peptides, or AMPs, that kill bacteria directly. IL-22 also enhances IL-23 production in dendritic cells. This dialogue... Can you see how amazing our, our, our systems are? Like, this connection, the, the technology, <laughs> uh, the latest in soft technology, yo. Right? Um, so very complex system. You see they create an AMP, which actually knocks off the... the um, any harmful bacteria within the system. Between dendritic cells and... So imagine it, what happens if your, your body, if your, your uh, mechanic system isn't working uh, to its efficiency, to the intended efficiency that it's intended to work at. ILC3s maintains the barrier against pathogenic or commensal bacteria. ILC3s also interact with macrophages to establish tolerance towards the commensal microbiota. Antigen from gut bacteria induces the inflammatory cytokine IL-1-beta in macrophages, which in turn triggers the secretion of GM-CSF in ILC3s. GM-CSF signals back to macrophages to induce retinoic acid, which promotes the differentiation of regulatory T cells. Regulatory T cells are essential in maintaining tolerance towards the commensal microbiota. ILC2s contribute to responses against helminths. So you see, they, they, they're now going to show you the, the whole thing with the connection um, with, the, with the parasitic um, worms within the system, which uh, from my experience, I have noticed that they ha they also have a spiritual component to them. <laughs> so even even as deep as having uh, to the point of having a physical manifestation, like literally like someone connected um, would come into your reality that would act in a parasitic way. And I kid you not, like you you. Uh, well, again, from my experience, you, you <laughs> cleanse cer certain parts of your system, uh, even just energetically, because the energy aspect of it actually um, has its response physically as well. I've noticed that when I clear certain things energetically, I have a physical response to the, to the energy coming out of my physical body. Clear. Um, and it also has a correspondence to what type of uh, individuals are able to come around your space even, right? So they're showing you here what the, what the parasitic worms within the system, and it's, it's hard to like keep, keep them off. Uh, well, <laughs> let me say in terms of the, the body, in terms of so many different foods that we actually intake, uh, if we have pets and stuff like that, but the, the idea is that you want your body to be running at an efficient level enough to actually then get off these these systems. So that's why I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go into showing you the mucoidal plaque and its connection to actually limiting our body's efficiency or the gut's efficiency and actually uh, running a smooth process in, in eliminating these these pathogens. These parasitic worms release enzymes that digest the mucus barrier and cause massive cell death. Epithelial cells sense the danger signals released by the dying cells and produce alarmins. 
In response to the alarm in IL-25, ILC-2s make mediators that induce mucus production from goblet cells, send activated dendritic cells to the lymph node where they can prime T-cell effectors, recruit eosinophils and mast cells, and induce muscle contraction. So, so again, um, it, this way you see, it, it, it's, it's, so again, like depending on what, what we actually uh, intake, cause we, we had, we literally have a world, a universe within our system, right? And when we intake certain things, certain GMO foods, again, you know, it all depends on what your body personally is maybe maybe going through. Uh, but you can see it like like how it explains here. Like your body literally goes into um like battle mode constantly with the the effects of certain pathogens and even certain types of food. Glyphosate, for example, has a very strong impact on the system and it registers for most people as a poison, right? Affects the system, it damages the mucoidal, um, it affects the mucoidal lining, it, it allows for these pathogens, these, um, yeah, to, to basically the, the microbiome goes out of whack, it goes off balance. and yeah, it essentially uh, allows for then these these pathogens to do their thing. So the body is now trying to fight that off, okay? These actions result in the expulsion of worms from the gut. In response to IL-33, ILC-2s also make amphiregulin. which induces tissue repair following worm clearance. Right, so the body is able to repair itself now. However, ILCs also... But most of the time, we, we also need um, some assistance in, in that, right? Right. Also contribute to tissue pathology. ILC1s, which make the inflammatory mediator interferon gamma, and ILC3s, which can acquire the ability to make interferon gamma during chronic inflammation, are found in inflammatory bowel diseases such as colitis and Crohn's disease and contribute to gut pathology. Right, so, so then colitis, as he says gamma during here. Interferon gamma, and ILC3s, which can acquire the ability to make interferon it, gamma it creates chronic, then chronic inflammation, inflammation, are found in inflammatory bowel diseases such which, as colitis and Crohn's disease and contribute right. to gut pathology. Which is then what, what links to a lot of the diseases uh, within the system, which also then is uh, contributing to the creation of the uh, mucoidal plaque within the system, the buildup of the mucoidal plaque. As such, ILCs participate in various aspects of immunity, from maintenance of the epithelial barrier and tolerance against commensals, to immune responses against parasites and pathology associated with chronic inflammation. Right. So you can see, right? So even even as this this line up here, I, lo I love this. I love this. Uh, it explains. So it shows. It shows the, the different. <laughs> right. Um, so. Most people, well, yeah, I, I, I guess I, it's safe to say that most people have uh, maybe this situation going on here in terms of chronic inflammation. Um, you would get certain, even for example, certain instances like um, um, cases of maybe like depression, uh, anxiety certain things such as irritable as you mentioned irritable balls bowel syndrome um certain things such as uh autoimmune responses 
right? And those those uh, numbers are vast in terms of the amount of the number of uh, the amount of inflammatory different inflammatory diseases. So the idea is that you want the body to you want to reverse the process of the chronic inflammation, getting rid of the pathogens, pathogen clearance within the system. So this could be a process of cleansing and um, also revitalizing the system using probiotics, uh, bringing the system back into balance. All right. So that, let me see. I, I may have some other stuff here. Uh, yeah, I have, a, I have a playlist on here. Uh, so there are a few videos on here you can check out. Um, you know, understanding the body, if that, if that resonates for you. Right, so I'll just do one more video here uh, this will explain alongside the, the cells that make up our bodies there are trillions the bacteria. of microscopic organisms it's not just the friendly bacteria in our guts that help us digest food bacteria live on our skin in our mouths and in the vagina and it's not just bacteria we're home to populations of viruses fungi and archaea too when does this colonization begin most scientists think we acquire our first bacteria when we're born, and before that, babies develop in a sterile environment. But recently, a few studies have found traces of bacterial DNA in the placenta and in the amniotic fluid that surrounds the fetus, as well as in meconium, a baby's first poo. Could this be evidence of bacteria living with us before birth? Maybe but many scientists think these findings could be the result of contamination. There's an ongoing debate. Whatever the answer, everyone agrees that the first major colonization occurs during and just after birth. Babies born by vaginal delivery get a dose of bacteria from their mothers as they pass through the birth canal. After birth, the baby acquires more microbes from the air and from contact with objects and people around her. As she grows, many factors influence the makeup of her microbiota, her diet, whether or not she takes antibiotics or other drugs, how many people she interacts with, whether she has pets, where she lives, and potentially also her genetic makeup. Children that live in rural areas surrounded by animals and dirt host different sets of microbes to children brought up in urban environments. Right, so the, the microbes uh, is a I think from uh, Dr. Dr. Zach Bush, he would have explained, um, you know, he, he, <laughs> he influenced so much of uh, my, my knowledge and awareness on gut microbiome, uh, the microbiome world in general, uh, in connection with the, the, the whole thing with biofilm within the system. Again, certain pathogens live in the biofilm. Uh, that may not be beneficial to our system. So as you see here, they explain how the, the, the body from birth, from even before birth is interacting and has uh, interactions with microbiome. So when, when, you, when you then connect, when you think about uh, consciousness in itself, because you know, I, into uh, the consciousness. So here is where it connects for me, um, or where it connected. The, 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 the whole thing with the pathogens, the microbiome, they think of each of them having their own individual consciousness working in unison with the cells of our body, uh, working in tangent with the intelligence of the cosmic uh, system, cosmic order connected to us. Right, they make up a lot of our system. We have trillions of cells that literally just living on our hands, just environments on environments of you got environment on your on your um 
on your hand and a completely different environment on your forearm, right? It's like the difference between living in New York and living in Nepal or some place like that, right? And and it's just like like meet like little centimeters apart, you know, completely different environments. The skin is a completely different environment from inside the gut. The mouth is a completely different environment from inside the nose. Uh, the the hair, the eyes, right? So yeah, we we have an entire system that we. Uh, it, for me, it brought me to a different realization, a different, a deeper understanding of um, my physical system in connection to the spiritual aspect. Because these pathogens also would have a layer or level of consciousness, <laughs> right? Um, you can see how how intelligent how intelligence some of them are with the with the um the pathogens that would actually exist within the system so i'll do another video on that uh yeah if children aren't exposed to a wide variety of microbes they seem to be more likely to develop autoimmune and allergic conditions such as asthma and eczema right so here it explains then the the, the whole connection with gut with mm, with the diversity of the microbiome within the system and the connection to uh, certain uh, diseases within the system. So certain vulnerabilities, certain different people have vulnerabilities to certain things. So for example, with the whole thing with um, the CV-19, uh, think about the, the hand sanitizing that, that people are doing constantly right a lot of that actually goes into the to the to the skin and it goes into the bloodstream think of the pathogens that are on your on your hands right you it not it doesn't this basically doesn't discriminate against like what's good or bad pathogens on your system so when you put those things on your hand constantly you're actually wiping out everybody sterilizing everything on your hand um so that that's just an example but when you look at the whole thing with the gmo foods for example um glyphosate and stuff like that they actually are similar to like pro um antibiotics which actually again do they they, they target everything um so yeah which which leaves for the most part people in the maybe like the western diet which is full of gmo foods full of a lot of like the um msg and glyphosate stuff like that um leaving people very sterile so that's where you, you would have certain cases um, of a, a lot of like autoimmune responses a lot of like gut issues um asthma depression different right so i just want to speak on that a hygiene hypothesis and it's one example of how our microbiota influences our health throughout our lives by adulthood our bodies contain as many microscopic organisms as human cells if not more our physiology relies on these communities for example, they protect us from harmful bacteria and help us digest food. As microbes break down food, they produce molecules called metabolites, which circulate in the bloodstream, reaching all tissues of the body and affecting our metabolism. I love, <laughs> A diverse community of gut microbes. I love the mechanics of our, um, metabolism. A less diverse um, microbiota body. is associated with inflammatory bowel disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Some studies even suggest that microbial metabolites can it. affect the brain and influence our mental health. As we get older, our microbiota continues to change. Studies show that the gut microbiota of older people differs from that of young adults, potentially contributing to aging-related changes to our immune system and brain function. There's an awful lot still to learn. So imagine, imagine then um, maybe does. taking in like certain, certain, um, 
maybe certain foods that had are lighter in frequency and stuff like that. Um, a lot of I noticed that a lot of like these uh, we would call like superfoods um, have some kind of anti-aging effects or uh, antioxidant effects, right? Uh, let me see. So, so okay. So, uh, let's go in a little bit into the mucoidal plaque. I'll do another video on this though, because I have to. I don't know how long this is gonna last, but um, let me just. Uh, so, disclaimer on on this. Um, don't watch. Don't watch this part if you eat in food. Uh, if you you're not able to stomach certain certain things. Um, please don't watch this part. You have been warned. All right, so let's go into it. There are many different ways to actually clear the mucoidal plaque, right? Uh, but so yeah, so when when I did my cleanse, when I did that cleanse, um, this is what I actually found. If you want me to post up pictures of mice, of you know, <laughs> I could, I could. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll do another presentation on it um, at some point. Okay, let me not beat Ronnie Bush. Um, yeah, some people have. Uh, you can you see this, right? It kind of looks like this, <clears throat> right? And th this stuff comes out of people. Um, I know it looks like feces, but it, it actually, if you look at it, is a, it's a it follows it traces the colon um, pattern, right? So it looks, but you can you can see, uh, for example, here, yeah, right. So it basically um, is you basically taking out a lot of the buildup of the mucus that would have been explained in those previous videos, right? So I, I'm not gonna stay on that too long. I'm gonna do another video on the mucoidal plaque. I, I need to, I wanna put together some research um, a little deeper on that as well. Cause there's a whole different, it's a deep arcana in itself. Uh, and connecting to like certain uh, cleanses and stuff like that uh, associated with it. No, I'm not a medical doctor, so I right I did a course in nutrition. Um, my whole connection, <clears throat> a lot of this was through my own personal experience. Uh, my connection with doing energy energy healing for a few years uh especially on myself so I, I i always kind of bring yeah i i, I always want to experience a lot of these things on my own uh first and then i i, I would assist others or give certain tips on how to uh cleanse certain things within any system right so uh yeah, uh, if anything comes back up, I'll do another video. Um, actually, let's see, mucoidal plaque. Uh, so there, there are certain, certain levels of, certain uh, layers of cleansing um, in terms of the mucoidal plaque. Um, let me, right, which basically aligns with, uh, using certain, certain things such as, um, uh, psyllium husk. I use bentonite clay. Some people use charcoal. Um, and the idea is that you, you want to stop. You're gonna have to. Well, I what I did. Let me let me just talk about what I did. What I did was that I 
I eased off of food for maybe three days and then did five days with no food, just liquids only. Right. That's to allow for the the um the body to to just deal with getting out the, the mucus, the mucoidal plaque within the system. So it doesn't have to you now deal with food that in, in the colon, in the gut and stuff like that. Um, and what I did was I, I took psyllium husk and all right, which, which then from my experience actually, uh, allowed my my system to actually work more efficiently so you would have seen in some some of the videos they would have explained certain things like pathogens and stuff like that again i'll, I'll do another video on that um maybe speaking on the how the how the bacteria actually affect the the, the brain system right which then this this then trickles in or moves into then the realms um the realm dynamics of the mind system the spiritual mind system and how it connects to the activation of your uh pixel divisions which would be the pixels or the activations within your body energetic system which then allows for the activation cycles of your ascension process right so yeah, just given the, the physical, the, well, the physical aspect of it, uh, I am aware, yes, most people have uh, certain compromises within their physical system, which uh, have, which would have effects on the mind system, uh, affecting the mind. So it's harder to get out of a, of a certain frequency or vibration, maybe a lower vibration into a more high rise formation. Uh, so yeah, right. So that is part one. I, I can say it's part one, right? Um, so yes. So I appreciate you, you guys um, watching. I appreciate your comments. Uh, I appreciate the new subscribers that are here. Welcome, right? I forgot to say that in my last video um yes welcome right and yes yeah, it's, it's a journey it's it's gonna be a journey and i'm here i'm here to to share my experiences with uh consciousness phrasing my consciousness and uh, connecting more to what i am able to do in terms of uh, my intuitive sense stuff like that so and, and i noticed a key part is the the gut right so i'll leave it at that uh, everyone have a have a a great day and you're moving forward in wholeness